us is nothing but the promise of the Father. It is any, any, any blessing that God has confinanted to you as a Christian. It begins with the blessings of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and invite the blessed Holy Ghost. Blessed Holy Ghost, you are my paracleto, my helper. You are my comforter. You are my encourager. You are my strength. You are my shell. You are my buckler. Lasuka, you are my instructor. Lusuba Katayaladaya, you are my guidance. Lesuria Paraka Padudera, Lesudeke Patutera, you are my beginner. You are my transformer. Holy Ghost, I come. Malede Sutia, Radike Parana de Kata, Lesulia Kapayaladea, Arapa Papa Lasuna, La Lege Kede Kede Kede. Le sulie ke patute la capa ya la ne akara ra le 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 mo shalara you are the seed of age to come and you are my comforter lino mo sa ya kapaduza my strength and my breath libro shaka bali akata thank you holy ghost lift up your right hand to him and tell him how much you love him oh how i love you i love you <laughs> i love you sweet holy spirit i love you you are trapped what you love i love you Lenema Suliet Eliada Rabadusina Nairaya, who all is spirit, is Sudin and Nealada Puria Daliada. I love you, I love you, sweet, all is spirit. I love you. I can see you. Just coming to me. I behold you, the promise of the Father. The almighty presence that comes with the glory of the Father. You are our covering. How wonderful it is when you come upon your own. Not only to heal and to comfort our heart, but to be our covering. Our covering. Bible said the man and the woman were naked, but they were not ashamed. For God was their covering. Holy Ghost. The choir sang that you are the one that lives inside of me. And the doors your wonder that the world around me begin to look at me as a wonder. Great and mighty the Lord. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our power. Great is our power. This season appears to be the best of seasons. Yes, Lord. Yes. Where those that understand your secret will know the best thing to wait and look for. If you keep all of us here one more million, it will look good. But it will look wonderful and better 
when you bless us with your Holy Ghost. Because the Bible said that the self that belongs to you and the God belongs to you. So when you give us what belongs to you, it won't make much difference. But when you give us yourself, we can reproduce all that you have produced. Holy Ghost in us is the only thing that will make us look like you. Be you a worthy representative. Nothing can be better than power Christianity. We cannot be power without the Holy Ghost. Christianity outside the Holy Ghost is religion. Lord, we've come. The Bible says they wait on him and their faces were not ashamed. We've come to wait on you. We've come. 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 Holy Spirit, we need you. Come. Sweet Spirit, strength and power come come your special way come Holy Spirit come, come. just like Holy Spirit you are inviting and welcoming someone to yourself Express it in your heart. Close your eyes and just say, Come, sweet spirit, my friend. Special blessed Holy Spirit, we wait on you. 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 Lord, we wait on you. Just worship it. We, we wait, wait on you. Lord, Lord we, we wait on you. We wait. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. Just as you minister to him, you get closer to him. As you minister to him with expectations, we wait on you. 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 We wait on you, Lord. Lord, we wait on you. Hey, thank you. Thank you.
know something is in my heart I was, I was talking to Pastor Brown this afternoon and I said many we pastors I know are going to heaven and the concern is that many disciples are not being duplicated the Bible says after Joshua the next generation of Joshua did not know the Lord and that was the beginning of the book of Judges so God handed them over to their enemies so there's OJS in my spirit after our generation what happens to the next generation it will not be on record that I pastored you and your generation for suk the law. Can I tell you, Christianity without the Holy Ghost is bleak future. Uncertainty. And immeasurable corruption. And that was why the church couldn't commence until there was a shift of power. I call it power shift. But was moved from heaven and moved into the heart of men and they became the God church on the earth it is the Holy Ghost that makes you the church of God on the earth may you not be a Christian in emptiness so how can I have this Holy Ghost and how can I walk with this Holy Ghost you need to first of all have a confident knowledge of him and then open up your heart of faith to receive him and begin to partner with him today friday saturday sunday i like you to believe god my partnership with the holy spirit will be renewed i will experience him he will fill me up and that will be the brand that he has wanted me to do Listen, the Holy Ghost is God's brand. Is what? God's brand. If you want to know how God works, how God moves, how God do the things He do, you need to connect to God's brand. It's God's brand of power. It's God's brand of conventional, I mean, supernatural weapon. And I believe God that you are going to witness God's brand in these few weeks. Please lift up your hands and say, Holy Spirit, thank you one more time. Thank you. You know, that's a hymn that says, just like I am, Lord. You know? It just came to my spirit. it we sing it on friday right we sing it because it just came and i, I know that as we come it will come Amen. hallelujah Amen. god bless you maybe sit there briefly i have been posting quite a number of you and sometimes asking you to do better there are a lot of things we are developing that can make you stronger as many of you who are business and traders to sign up to so many things because God is rebranding his church and some of our pastors have asked you to return back to school this is a time the world is changing very fast and you have to just do that if we have to maintain the call and the mandate upon our life Luke chapter 24 and verse 49 and he said and behold and behold I sent the promise of my father upon you 
I sent the promise of my father upon you. Be tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. I love this translation. Luke 24 and verse 49. Can we read it together? You see, this was one of those things that Jesus said when he resurrected from the dead. His resurrection was perceived by the disciple to be an end to the ministry. And so he resurrected to be with them forever. But he told them, my resurrection was a sign. All right? That there was shift in the power. My resurrection was the beginning of my ministry. Are we here? I, I walk with you stationed in one place where you are. So I, I walk with you in such a conventional perspective that you will be able to know me as the Messiah. But you are about to know me at the resurrection. Are we here? You know in John chapter 11, he introduced his name and revealed his name when Lazarus died. And he said to Mary and Martha, I am the life and resurrection. No one has ever raised a dead man before that time. They believe in the theory of the systematic theology of Moses. That the dead Israelites we resurrect again. But they didn't know it was going to happen now. Someone said now. So he joined them in the morning. Even the Bible said he even wept. And Jesus wept. One of the shortest verses of the Bible. To show that the death of Lazarus was painful. But it was a terminal death. It was death not expected. Are we here? Every death before you that is not permitted by God shall be terminated. Yeah. You know, the ministry of Jesus was brought to a halt, suspended for a while to address the abortion of the life and mandate of Lazarus. And before he could do it, he introduced himself. I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, even if he were dead, yet he shall live again. And before he finished the reply, like some of you do, yes, we know he shall live at the resurrection day. And they said to them, come, where do you bury him? Come and show me. And they took him to the grave. That's to show you the ecstasy. The ecstasy of the power of the Holy Spirit. And when they brought him to the grave of Lazarus, the Bible says he stood there. And he looked up and he said, God, this thing I'm about to ask is not because of me. Because I know you hear me all the time. But that these people around me may know my other name that they don't know. Come on out here. When you carry the Holy Ghost, there's something about you that the world around you have not known that they will begin to know. Come on, are we here? He said, now, when he has said it, the Bible said, he looked down and he shouted, Lazarus! It looks like madness. How calling a dead man that had been buried four days ago? Why calling? Can a dead man hear his name? He's dead. You see, when he introduced himself as resurrection and life, he quickly simply introduced himself at the resurrection. Are we here? The Bible says the resurrection power went into the grave, burst the grave. That's why the Bible describes the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, the Holy Ghost is a supernatural tsunami. When he wants to operate, you can't stop him. Come on, are we here? 
It's like a win. He will always have his way. I think on Sunday I'll be giving you seven symbols of the Holy Ghost. And I will be asking the Lord to manifest them in your lives. Praise God. When, when he wants to have his way, you can't stop him. And when you are carrying the force that cannot be stopped, you will become unstoppable. I wouldn't know who had the dare to stop you. They have come to their bus stop. How can you describe a sound and the force of a voice that went to the grave? The request was specific. And then went to the grave, pulled out the dead Lazarus, burned cloth, burned head, every great clothes was on him. He came out, but he was not speaking. So he came out without life. And they said, lose him and let him go. And the Bible says his ministry multiplied. He had not died before this time. How much more? If he had died, what would have happened? This was one of the reasons he resurrected. He said, just like I showed you in the case of Lazarus, because all the disciples, including Judas, saw the miracle of the resurrection of Lazarus. So when he resurrected, he appeared to them and did a lot of wonders, opened their eyes to see miracles. And when it was time for him to ascend, he said, you hold on. Behold. The word behold means see. I sent to you the promise of the Father. What's he talking about here? Someone shout it. Like you mean it. Shout it with boldness. So what is the promise of the Father? Start that in your mind again. What is the promise of the Father? So you now know that the, one of the name of the Holy Ghost is the promise. Okay? And that means that those things you are looking in the Bible as the promises of God can never get to you without connecting to the promise. Others are promises. But the promises cannot reach you without a confident connection to the promise or what i call mr promise if you check your bible let me check my own before i ask you to check your own are we here if you check your bible very well you will see here that it was concluding it's on red i send the promise of my father upon you i send the promise of my father so who actually is the giver and the sender of the holy ghost hmm? the resurrected jesus he was concluding his ministry but then he was going to hand over to the one who will now be able to exercise and enforce or his mandate of redemption on the earth. And that, pers that personality is the Holy Ghost. So on Sunday, I said to you a few things about the Holy Ghost. That is another counselor, comforter, or helper. In addition to that, you are now knowing him at the promise of the Father. Are we here? You are also knowing him at the resurrection. You are also knowing him at the life. The resurrected life. Are we here? So it's your comforter. Many of you will say, Oh, I've not seen apostle for a while. I've never seen apostle sad. The Bible said that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you can't be righteous without the help of the Holy Ghost. You can't have peace. In fact, you can't be free from pressure without the help of the Holy Ghost. On Sunday, I told you, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you will become light. 
Are we here? You throw away the weight. Weight is pressure of life. When you begin to carry the pressure of life and begin to carry it on your head, it means that the Holy Ghost is far from you. Are we still here? Now, when you know him as a counselor, it will become your comforter and your helper. Though generally, those pressure might be there, you won't feel it. The Holy Spirit is to be with us forever. You remember John chapter 14? Okay? Come, and, come there. 14. John 14. And then um, verse 16. And now we pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. You see, one of the confidence I have developed as a pastor and as a Christian is that I love people. I value people. My greatest expectation from God is to give me people. Are we here? And everyone God gives to me, I don't play with them. But if they yield themselves to the devil, I won't kill myself about it. Are we here? God who sent them to me will know what he will do. Are you understanding me? Because no matter how good and how well you want to behave yourself, people will still misbehave. People will still find fault. And sometimes the pain is that they wouldn't want to fall alone. They will drag people with them. But know this today. Anybody may leave you. But make sure that the Holy Ghost is with you. Look at it there. And it will abide with you forever. For what? Forever. If you have lost anything like money, don't worry. If you've lost customers, don't worry. If you've lost values, don't worry. If you have been cheated by people that you trusted, don't worry. What will happen? He is there. Just wake him up. Wake him up. Whatever matters to you more than every other thing is your life. Somebody, are you here? If you can live and have the Holy Ghost, you shall reach your destination. And that word, abide with you forever, means what I was telling you on Sunday. Can you remember? What was the topic of Sundays? In dwelling. Praise God. You know, I chose that word so that it can make more meaning. In dwelling. Not out dwelling. In dwelling. He lives in your inside. The word abide means to dwell. Okay, to dwell. And the Bible says forever, when he enters, it will be difficult for him to go. But it will be hard. It's not cheap for him to come in. But once he comes in, it's not going to go home. Behold, I send you. It's a pledge. It's a covenant commitment. It's a promise. The promise of the Father. But you have to wait for it. Tarry here until you be endued with power. Come on, are we here? Don't start the ministry. Don't move forward. Don't move further until you experience it. The indwelling power of the Holy Spirit is what they call experiential, you know, encounter. You experience the Holy Ghost visibly. Are we here? You have an internal experience that you have experienced something. You know what, like when we were singing with the choir, I, I couldn't express how I was feeling. I, I know he was already here. The glory were everywhere. The presence was everywhere. I wasn't feeling my office anymore. Even if my office is attached to the cathedral. 
Talk less of remembering that I have a home. So, he dwells in us by our conscious commitment to desire him at the altar of worship. Have we not know that it's a promise and that he has been willed to you by God? You are expected to consciously expect this visitor. Are we here? It's God's visitor to you. Now, this experience did not start now. I want to give you three experiences. When Abraham had an encounter, it was a, an encounter that occurred in his conscience. He experienced a transformation. And then he began to hear in different voice. You know, we're all led. We're all led and powered by voices. So the voice he had, the experience he had, the Bible says when he got up, Genesis chapter 12, he wake up his wife. He said, pack your tails. When you marry a man like Abraham, you need to be disciplined to follow him. Otherwise, you will lose him. You are thinking, I, if, if Mama Sarah has said, what kind of madness is this? Pack my things to where? Where are we going? The wife should not know. You know, sometimes you say, I've decided to follow Jesus. Can you ever sing, I've decided to marry you, me? <laughs> Praise God. Have you decided about it? You decided. And that's your decision. Sometimes when we want to know everything, we will know nothing. Sarah, pack your tents. We are moving out of this land. Yes, my Lord. Can that be true of any one of us? Even when you have a pastoral instruction, you want to ask for explanation. That was how it is. And Sarah packed. And they began the journey. That is not what a natural mind can do. Holy Ghost transplant your mind. It transplant your heart. It takes away the natural template. And it infuses into you the supernatural template. Where it begins to make you to see God. To hear God before you hear anything. Did they know where they were going? No. Did they know how long it's going to be? No. Were they happy in their action? Yeah. They were so excited. May the Holy Ghost begin to move you from now. They got to a spot as they moved. The Bible says, Abraham says, stop. And they set up an altar. And they did an altar. And they thank God for the journey so far. My friend told me, said, in their province of the PFN, he said, when they were asking for this bill, this bill, this bill, he didn't just know what to do. And suddenly, God just asked him, do um, a quarter thanksgiving to God. And he announced it. And he noticed that virtually everybody were in need of God. And when they came to that meeting, God visited the province in a manner that they never thought. Praise God. Because the province lacked money. Himself needed money. But if we lack money, God is the owner of money. So how, how can money come? He took it to God. You need the Holy Ghost to know what to do when you don't know what to do. Did you hear what I said? The Bible said, He will abide with you, which means He will dwell with you. And remember, on Sunday I told you, He said, It's a supernatural personality. So He dwells to partner with you. Young Echo called Him my senior partner. The Bible said that, and then the narration had it in the fourth dimension of His book. When He wake up, He said, Good morning, Holy Spirit. 
He was so well with the Holy Spirit that when he wants to eat, he said, Holy Spirit, let us eat. Praise God. He became so conscious that he wasn't walking alone, that he was walking with a super being that natural eyes cannot see. He will abide with you forever. Do you ever recognize him? Will you ever acknowledge him? That he's the one working with you, abiding with you. A visitor you don't open the door for, will they come in? A visitor or helper you don't appreciate, will he continue to help you? We need to know daily that no matter what we have achieved, we need to develop a consciousness of saying, Holy Ghost, thank you for today. Before you ask about the 500 naira nest, you need to thank him for the 200 naira. Come on, we're here. When you become so conscious of the working culture and presence of the Holy Ghost, nobody will tell you. Nobody will even know when you are sick. Because everything will just turn. Are we here? So he stopped the post and he gave thanksgiving to God. And after they continued, war broke out in his camp between his brother and his own hard men. And the Bible said, he watched it. Will I send my brother back? Will I disown my own servant? He called his brother. He told the Holy Ghost to make peace. When we continue in war as Christian, it is most likely that we have lost connection with the Holy Spirit. Stop talking. Stop contending for that battle. Look up to God and ask him, Holy Spirit, what next will you want me to do about this matter? Praise God. Because the peace you don't hold is the pressure you will remain in. I will fight for you. You hold your peace. The word of God is not just for you to know it. It's for you to walk with it. Are we here? So we saw Abraham there and the Bible said they got to chapter 18 and God said for I know Abraham even when he had not gotten a child that he shall be a great man and he shall be he shall command his house he shall be able to lead his house I know him how will God know a man who has been struggling in the wilderness a man who has made a lot of mistakes it that means that from the time he had an encounter God's spirit took over him that is what they call indwelling he became a house where God's presence dwell today may you become that house where the Holy Ghost shall dwell come on are we here and we moved from there we saw a man who went out to look for what was lost and they found the throne you know the name of the man? Was called Saul. He left the father's house looking for what was lost and suddenly met with a prophet. And when he met with the prophet, he had an encounter. The Bible said in First Samuel chapter 10, I think verse 7, Samuel said to him, And when the spirit calls upon you, do as occasion demand. Praise God. Which means, I won't be there to tell you what to do. But you will know what to do. I wish you can put all that, that scripture on the screen. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 7 to 9. I want the spirit, when you move from dance, he is going to move from good news to favor and then to an encounter. Come on, I hear. I think I need to read that scripture before we start praying. Second, first Samuel. First Samuel chapter 10. Are you there?
Verse 7. And let it be when these signs are come unto thee that thou do as occasion serve thee. For God is with thee. For God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offering and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offering. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Verse 9. And it was so that when he had torn his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. Someone say indwelling. And all these signs came to pass. That same day, he received four prophecies in one day. And the four prophecy came to pass in one day. So Saul was another one that encountered the Holy Ghost before the Holy Ghost. The next person was David. Second Samuel chapter 16. Verse 12 and 13 said, And Samuel anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of God came upon him and they turned into another man. Praise God. Now, Caleb and Joshua, the Bible said, they had another spirit. So the Holy Ghost is another spirit. Are we here? It's not a natural spirit that everybody has. It's a super spirit that comes from God. It is one experience of God for every one of us that will make us become a transformation agent. People that will change the narrative and people that will do exactly what God will want done. Come on out here. But you have to, you have to tarry for it. He said, be tarry ye here until you be indeed with power. Now, this Holy Ghost is the power of God working in man. It's the voice of God speaking to man. It's the personality of God. Are we here? Enforcing God's mandate in man. I'll be telling you on Friday how it became another power. So on Friday, by the grace of God, we might be looking at power shift. Are we here? And by the grace of God, you will never remain the same. So if these fathers had the experience of the Holy Ghost in their time, and Jesus came and died so that we shall have the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said, the Holy Ghost is for the church. He said, the world cannot receive it. Verse 17 of John chapter 14, we close with it. The world cannot receive it. Only the church. Only the church. John chapter 4, chapter 14. But even the spirit of truth, somebody call him the spirit of truth. The spirit of lies. So if you are lying and you claim to have the Holy Ghost, your own Holy Ghost is another Holy Ghost. He says this as it is. And there's nothing anybody will do. There were young men in this church when they came in here and they were doing businesses and I was teaching them how to do business. Because I went to their office I visited their office and just there I watched customers come in. How much are you selling this? And they call prices. And they call prices. And they call prices. I watched them call prices. I watched them negotiate prices. At the end of the day, I watched them lose customers. So the next day I invited them to my office. I said, if I were you, I will make my little shop a supermarket. You know the difference? You don't price in supermarkets. You do your calculation. You make your survey within your environment. And then you take your position. You stay at the peak 
within the market environment. Praise God. So no matter where they go, that first price you call is what sends your brand. If you tell somebody something is 10,000, only for him to come back and buy it 2,000, he will never trust you. Are we here? It's different when you tell somebody this thing is 2003 and you end up at 2000. Come on, are we here? It's going to make a person, this one is very reasonable. So you do your calculation. By the time I finish educating them, they started treading at their base. Mike was one of them, Chid was one of them. And we can see where they are. So, if you have the Holy Ghost, you will have a culture of saying the truth, no matter the cost. Are we here? The truth is that whatever God wants to do, he will do. It doesn't matter the competition. Because you can't compete with a man and woman who is working with God. They're giving contract. Make yourself a and put it. We're going to train some people. And we're calling some affiliate schools to partner with us. And they were calling prizes. I was saying, how can you give people this kind of certificate at social amount? I said, ours is a mandate. Ours is not commercial. If you want to partner with us, this is what you will do. And so on. So I want to charge you today that the Holy Spirit will power your mind to know the truth, to hold the truth, to say the truth, and to become the truth. Are we here? Whom the world cannot receive. Because he seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. But you know him. Today, by the grace of God, you shall know the Holy Ghost. For he dwelleth with you. Somebody say he dwelleth with me. You only need to be conscious that he's dwelling with you. When you are married and you are sleeping in the bed with your wife, will you not know that your wife is present? Are we here? When you start feeling empty, you will know that something is missing in you. But when you start feeling confident, even when you don't have money, you have such assurance, you just have such confidence. Are we here? Then you know that, yeah, there's something occupying me. We call him the indwelling. He was given by God to dwell. And when he comes, he doesn't go. He only leaves when we die. Somebody says, okay, but I can pray now. The fact is that the Holy Ghost is there. What happened to the fire? You must have given your heart to pressure, to quarrel, to indiscipline, to wrong association, to excuses. But if you can be coming out like this, and we hear like this and pray together, you will get back, okay, on track. You will maintain a culture to know that the Holy Ghost is living inside of me. Read the last line. For he dwelleth with me, and shall be in me. I believe in the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. It means God dwelling in me, living in me, acting through me to transform my world and to glorify his kingdom. Holy Spirit, you are welcome inside of me. Come and take your place. Just gently, consciously feeling the Holy Spirit rise to your feet. Come. That's an invitation. Holy Spirit, I need you. Come. Come. Sweet Spirit, I pray. 
call in your great strength and power. Come in your own special way. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I need you. Just minister to yourself. Come, sweet spirit, I pray. Come, come, in your strength and your power. Come, in your own special Forever you will be. Forever you will be. Yeah. The lamp upon the throne. You are the lamp upon the throne. Lord, I glad now my knees. I gladly bow my knees. Worship you, Lord. Forever you will be my God. Forever you will be. Lord, forever. Take it, just, just worship. Gladly bow my knees. I gladly bow my knees. Just minister to yourself. Worship you unto the O Lord. The Lord, do I lift up my soul? Unto thee, do I lift up my soul? Oh, my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph. Holy Spirit, I need you. I invite you. Come, come, sweet spirit, I pray. Come, to sing here. Come, in your great strength. And power come, 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 come. You are on special way. The promise of the Father come, Halada de Galamaya. The promise of the Father come. I send you the promise of the Father. Holy Ghost, you are the promise of the Father. Can you open up your heart and begin to receive the promise of the Father? Oh. I send you the promise of the Father. I send you the promise of the Father. In your special way, Re 
receiving the promise of the Father. Amen. Amen. And now open your mouth and say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you. You are the promise of the Father to me. Holy Spirit, I need you. You are my divine personality. Come into my life now and take your place. Come to occupy. Come and take your place, Holy Spirit. Ah, la deca parena no zige de galadia. La de paraba oika pa sute de legala. Rena nege de gede. Ela da la da baba baba. You are la babo capa romana su capa tilia. Ledia caraba da bada. Holy Spirit, you are the promise of the Father. All the spirit, you are the promise of the Father. All the spirit, you are the promise of the Father. I invite you to come. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of truth. Come dwell in me. Come take your place in me. Of the spirit of church, come occupy and take your place as the spirit of church. Truth is the antidote to lie and begin to eject every lies that have been stored up in my body, every lie that have been told about my life, every lies of hell. Just pray, just pray. Truth can inject lie. I don't know the lies that are clouded your life as a barrier. But when truth come, the lies shall disappear. I don't know whoever has said lies that you cannot make it. May the truth of God say, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in hell. Holy Spirit, call. You are the spirit of truth. Begin to say what God says about my life. I shall make her. My house shall make her. My body shall make her. My health shall make her. That shall work for me. You are making her away from me. All the spirit I shall make her. Come by the power of truth. In my life, God be glorified, be glorified in my life. God be glorified. Be glorified today. And he will dwell with you. He will dwell with you forever. He dwell with David. I mean with Abraham. He dwell with Saul. He dwell with David. In the Old Testament, he domiciled his kingdom in their body. And in the New Testament, he dwell with you as resurrection and power. He does send spirit that resurrection from death dwells in you. He shall quicken your mortal body. I want you to open your mouth and invite the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, come dwell in me. Come dwell in me. Holy Ghost, come dwell in me. Holy Ghost, come dwell in me. In dwell in me, I quicken my prayer life. Dwell in me, I quicken my inspiration. Dwell in me, I quicken in my business, dwell in me and quicken my marriage, dwell with me and quicken my health. Come dwell in my life. Come dwell and quicken my spirit. Holy Ghost, I need you, Lord. Holy Ghost, dwell in me, dwell in me, O God. Without you, I can do nothing. Holy Ghost, dwell in me. Open my eyes to see Jesus. 
Seated upon the throne. Holy Ghost, do it again. Come, Lord. Do it again in my life. Please lift up your hand. Again, we're constrained with time tonight. May the Lord will create the time for us. Remember. Omima na rekele Omima na rekele Omima Omima biko na rekele I'd like you to also express yourself before the Holy Spirit Omima Here's the promise of the Father and the Bible said, and God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with power and the Holy Ghost, and he went everywhere doing good. When you carry the Holy Ghost, you enter into the ministry of divine goodness. Everywhere you go, you will encounter God's goodness. No one else but Him. None of you here will become a victim by reason of demonic practices. I bring you under the shield and enveloping power of the Holy Ghost. In your assignment, you shall dwell in safety. Son, no accident, no incident shall consume you. As you journey on your assignment, God will keep you, preserve you, Protect you. Amen. Defend this name in your life. Amen. Jesus. Now, as you go with the Holy Ghost, where there be no way for you in all your endeavor, right from within, God will begin to make ways. Amen. That's ways for your help. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Power. That's ways for your help. That's ways. The spirit wave for you. That's ways. Ways. Ways for you. That's a new you. And that's wave of the new you. God is making this wave. Thank you, Jesus. La Sonia Kapatayala. There's a wave that turns everything around. It's a wave of you in the you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. It's just your work. Come as a mighty force. Approach. Operate. And rely just for your glory. I give you a Holy Spirit and have your way in her now. Have your way in her. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in her. Have your way in her. Have your way. The Lord will make rooms for you. I will make ways for you. You will never be alone. You see him. And you see him. He will help you. When he runs through you, he runs through you and through your fountain. 
Spirit of God, Holy move through this Spirit, man. Have now. your way. Now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, purify your soul like a gold by the Holy Ghost. Purify him like a gold. Just a touch of you in him. Like a gold. Like a gold. Like a gold. Touch him fresh. Renew him. His spirit. His prayer life. Everything about him. The organs. Make everything fresh and new. Thank you, Father. Father. Like gold, like fountain, like rivers for your forehead. I ask the Holy Ghost to touch you. Touch you. Touch you and take it away. The fountains out of you. The infirmities is gone. The burdens are gone. There's a touch of him upon your life. In the name of Jesus. So I might be to say my body Hell, glory and honor is your for you and your house or to you. Purify me. Thank you. Purify me, me like a gold. Thank you, to say my body. My body, Lord, my body Thank you. Thank you. is, is your Thank you. sanctuary. I take away the infirmities by the help of the Holy Ghost. My and I decree your stability in the Holy Spirit. Is your sanctuary. Purify me like a gold. So, I might be bound to say my body is a sanctuary. Yes, Lord. And Jesus said, This is my body that is broken for you. A whole somebody who was giving up on the cross. He said, Eat it. And you remember my, my death and my resurrection. The death was painful, the resurrection was sweet. When we take it, we have a flash of the memory of the pain. <laughs> 